Shalom Saints, thank you for joining me today for this uh, time of devotion. I thought what we would do today is uh, revisit Psalm 89, which was the psalm for this past Sunday. Uh, there was some things that uh, touched me, my heart, that I thought would be timely for us as well in this season uh, to focus on. So I'm going to take portions of it. It's actually a pretty long psalm. It's uh, going through uh, 52, 53 verses, depending on how it's broken down. Uh, we won't cover all those, but we'll cover the span of them uh, because of the applicability for our day uh, that we're in. Because our circumstances have been uh, challenging, to say the least. Um, and this psalm was written uh, not by uh, King David, but by somebody after him um, during a time of real challenge to uh, the nation uh, of Israel. Um, we'll touch on that then in a minute and explain that more. But I just wanted you to hear that um, it was tough, it was difficult. And he responds then with this psalm with uh, praising the Lord, focusing in on the Lord's nature and his character. So let me read some of this uh, with you. <clears throat> it begins, I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I said steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens you will establish your faithfulness. So it begins with this declaration of uh, the Lord's nature, his character. He's uh, steadfast in his love. I mean, it's, it's immovable um, love. And his faithfulness, his character is that he is faithful. And he emphasizes this again a little later in a reading from this psalm. In fact, it's a faithfulness to all generations. Um, and I will make that known to them. And then he emphasizes that it's the heavens which will establish your faithfulness. In other words, they're going to bear witness to it. it the Lord <clears throat> is in heaven with the holy ones, with, with the, the councils described a number of places in Scripture. Uh, we've heard about the various uh, angelic levels, principalities, powers, you know, and those kinds of things. Certainly, I don't understand all that well. Just know that there's different levels and different nature of heavenly beings. Uh, the cherubim are a different uh, heavenly being, for instance, from uh, the angels that, uh, you know, like Gabriel. Um, and there are archangels and angels. So it, it's a lot more varied than what we often think of in heaven. And, and what the psalmist is saying here is that all those angelic, those, all those heavenly beings, to be more accurate, all those heavenly beings can bear witness to his faithfulness. It's established in their presence. They know him to be faithful in his very character. And in his love and character, he establishes covenant. And so the writer goes on to say, You have said I made, have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your offspring forever and build your throne for all generations. Again, what's referred to here is the, what's called the Davidic covenant. God um, um, established a covenant relationship with King David and had promised that uh, it would be an everlasting covenant. Uh, his throne would be everlasting. And the psalmist goes on to quote the Lord in verse 34. So slipping down to that, I will not violate my covenant or alter the word that went forth from my lips. Once for all, I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. I mean, that's a pretty explicit statement, isn't it? His offspring shall endure forever, his throne as long, long as the sun before me. Like the moon, it shall be established forever, a faithful witness in the skies. And Jeremiah says something very similar, you know, that uh, as long as the sun and moon exist, so does this promise uh, to David and to uh, Israel. Um, well, they're still existing, so that promise is still there uh, for them and for him. I will not lie to David. Um, so I'm going to keep my word, is what the Lord is saying here so clearly. And that's very important for us as Christians as well, because the Lord has promised that if we put our trust in him, we will know uh, his redemption and the promise of eternal life with him in the heavenly kingdom that's to come. It's going to be exciting and great, uh, and it's secure because the Lord has promised it. Truly, truly, whoever believes in me 
has eternal life. Do you believe in him? Then you have eternal life. He's not lying. Uh, just as he keeps his promise uh, to David, he keeps the promise to us. Um, but sometimes, it, <laughs> the way life goes, we wonder if that promise is uh, really um, maintained. And so now we have this uh, realism of his circumstance, the psalmist's circumstance, that he communicates to the Lord. He's, he's talking to the Lord. That's what, what these psalms are about. They're cries to the Lord. And so he says, But now you have cast off and rejected. You are full of wrath against your anointed. Anointed, of course, is uh, uh, the term for uh, anointing the kings. And, of course, that's also the term ultimately for the Messiah. He is the anointed one. Um, and so, speaking of wrath against your anointed, say, your wrath, O Lord, is being revealed against your king. Now, scholars presume that this is reference to Rehoboam, who is a, a descendant shortly after uh, David, um, a son of Solomon. And so, not very far down the Davidic line, and yet uh, Rehoboam was blowing it. He was falling short, um, and it led to... Um, judgment coming upon uh, Israel, and it was through um, the Pharaoh uh, who came in and assaulted Jerusalem and actually took away uh, important articles from the temple and took them back to Egypt. So the temple was plundered. I mean, that's just a real catastrophe uh, for Israel. The Lord stayed the hand of his judgment, uh, had some mercy, so they weren't uh, fully destroyed. But it was certainly a warning and it was a rough time for uh, the land. So think about our own experiences. I mean, we've not had somebody invade. Well, we've had a virus invade. Um, so it's been rugged that way. We've had the invasion of hostilities between peoples uh, going on in our culture. Um, it's been a remarkable time and a painful time. Uh, so it can lead one to think uh, that the Lord has abandoned us. So he goes on to say, You have renounced the covenant with your servant. You have defiled his crown in the dust. You have breached all his walls. Of course, he did that through the Egyptians. You have laid his strongholds in ruins. All who pass by plunder him. He has become the scorn of his neighbors. Well, now what? It's bad. So what does he do? He appeals to the Lord. One of the things I love about the Psalms is they are so uh, real. Uh, the emotions that come through. You know, when you've been wounded, betrayed, uh, you can find all throughout the Psalms uh, identification uh, with those same feelings and wondering, Lord, where are you? And so I love this line from verse 46. How long, O Lord, will you hide yourself forever? How long will your wrath burn like fire? Lord, when are you going to end this thing? When are you going to fulfill the promises that you had made? Lord, verse 49, where is your steadfast love of old, which by your faithfulness you swore to David? So notice the, the uh, honesty of, of how he's feeling. Um, and I think that's really important for us. To, you know, the Lord knows how we feel anyway. It's important for us then to share that with him. That's part of the, the nature of the fatherly relationship that we have with him and the intimacy that we have uh, with this amazing, faithful, merciful God is we can tell him how we feel. And we should tell him that. And so uh, that's, again, one of the values of the witness from the Psalms. And so he's just bearing his soul to the Lord. And he speaks here then of how we're, your servants are mocked. Remember, O Lord, how your servants are mocked and how I bear in my heart the insults of all the many nations uh, with which your enemies mock, O Lord which with they mock the footsteps of your anointed. Uh, so, Lord, they know that we're your people, um, and they're mocking. Uh, and that's, of course, um, a reflection on you as well as us, Lord. Um, they're mocking us, uh, making fun of us. And, I, I, you know, do you identify with that in our culture? I do. I see increasingly the mocking of those of us who believe that Jesus is uh, the Son of God who has come into the world to redeem us. Um, you know, people want to tear down statues of, G of Jesus. They, you know, kick Christians out, shut down the churches. Um, you know, Christians are, are the, the, the problem. Um, 
I mean, so many ways. You can see this increasing in our culture where uh, we're seen to be the problem and we're the ignorant ones. Um, and, and yet, that's then them describing the Lord that way, denying Him. And so it's like, okay, how long, O oh Lord, before you vindicate uh, yourself and vindicate your people? Well, the good news is through Scripture, the Lord promises that He's going to do that. Um, he keeps His covenant. His covenant for us in that new covenant is He's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. He's going to make it right. But how long, O oh Lord, it's going to happen? And so the psalmist ends this with, Blessed be the Lord forever, amen and amen. He doesn't explain that, except it must be rooted then in that hope and confidence he has in the nature and character of God. And that's where we must start. It's also where we must end always with that hope. And so we express uh, our circumstances to the Lord, express our hearts to the Lord, and we answer those needs and those cries by always remembering He is blessed, He is good in all His ways, and He will bring His shalom upon His people. So we pray for that, saints, and trust in that as we go through this uh, trying time together. Amen. Now let me just share a brief update. Um, we are going to continue ahead. This is, uh, you know, the Sunday after Independence Day coming up, first Sunday of, of the month. As the first Sunday of the month, um, we will be administering the sacrament uh, after the services in the porta de uh, So please join us uh, if you're watching this, uh, the services at home. Um, we're certainly thankful that we have the technology that we do to continue to uh, be together even when we're uh, apart. Um, and we do love you and are thankful for you and, and do pray that you, if you're not with us at the service Sunday that you come and drive through and share in communion with us uh, that way. So again, this uh, first Sunday, um, we're continuing to monitor the situation and um, and we'll just do so. I trust you saw the survey that came out. If you have not filled that out, please please do. That was sent out last uh, Friday uh, about noon. Um, we have had 125 or so people respond, and praise the Lord for that, as we're trying to determine what uh, we will do uh, upcoming when the time comes for us to add a second service. And so we're praying through that together. And do pray for us. All right, saints, I'll let you go. Um, I'm grateful for you and thankful that the Lord has brought us together to share in this journey in Him. Uh, let me pray His blessing over you now. And now may God uh, the Father bless you, God the Son keep you, and God the Holy Spirit give you strength now and always. Amen. See you soon.